Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the cheating allegations in chess. You guys probably already know that one of the biggest names in the chess world, Vladimir Kramnik, who used to be the world chess champion, announced that he will no longer play online chess games or tournaments because there are a lot of cheaters. But later on, he changed his mind and he decided to play online games and he also decided to stream those games to find the cheaters on the spot that is exactly what he's doing he's playing online games and streaming on youtube where everyone can take a look what is his feedback and ideas on the games well why i'm recording this video because one of the games that he played at the title tuesday uh he gave his thoughts and the feedback that he was a little bit suspicious from his opponent and who was his opponent the person that i know quite well she is from my country georgia and she's one of the top women chess players in my country and in the world so guys this is the key position in the game vladimir kronik against lela javahishvili who is the member of Georgian national team for years and years. And she is about to win the game. She has these two pass pawns, which are both of them ready to be queens. However, if you promote these pawns to queen, you lose the game on the spot because there is a checkmate on the back rank. Doesn't matter which pawn you promote, there will be a checkmate on the back rank. All she has to do is to promote this pawn to the knight to give a check to black's king kick this king away and then to promote another pawn but she has auto promotion to queen and with the seconds on the clock she just started to panic because basically she didn't know how to change it and in the comments she mentioned that it's not very often that she plays online chess tournaments so she had no idea how to change it well, if you also don't know, it's very simple. You just have to click uh, Shift and Alt and then drag the pawn and you can then have the options. You choose the uh, piece you want to promote. Let's say Knight here. There is a check. King goes away and now you can promote another pawn to the Queen and this is completely winning position. This is all what she had to do. But after the game, he was a little bit suspicious how Lela Javahashvili played the whole game and he mentioned that his her accuracy was uh, 80 something and if she could promote this pawn to the knight it would be over uh, 80 which is quite high uh, percentage of the accuracy from such a player that's what he actually mentioned but before that I want to take you through the comment that she mentioned which actually is a bit ouch but i think she felt insulted and that's why she said what she said so guys this is the post uh from lela javahishvili social media where there are a lot of comments and discussion and in one of the comments lela says that i also should mention i learned chess by his games she means uh, Vladimir Kramnik. He was my favorite chess player. Probably that's why I am still only international master. I think now it's time to take a look at the game. All right, Lela Javahashvili with white pieces, Vladimir Kramnik with black pieces. Lela starts one d4. Vladimir Kramnik responds with d5, and here we have something like a mix of Catalan and Slav. Uh, black uh, develops the bishop on g4 and now we have this quite standard slav defense setup where both queens are facing each other and we have queen trade on the move 10. actually here white's idea is to push the pawn all the way to b5 then to get the knight on c3 as well and actually here white's idea is to play knight to c3 and later on to play b4 and b5 to get rid of your double pawns or just to hold in the center so this is a theory here at this point and um, most of the players who play 1d4 knows about this so here we have also this side attack 
to limit the light square bishop knight is developed and white is somehow also taking into the consideration that maybe somewhere you can play e4 when you kick this knight uh, away from e4 square that can happen with knight to d2 uh point to this knight and then later on to play e4 in the center because black's pawn structure is not the greatest black have this weak pawn on e6 and white wants to open up the e-file so knight to h4 chasing the bishop and also opening the uh, road for the bishop here so basically if you move this one away you will lose the pawn here in the center in the game vladimir kramnik trapped here his opponent i responded with bishop to f7 and in the line which i showed you earlier if you capture this knight then g5 is a fork and you are losing a piece so lela said okay whatever uh, I will play knight to f3 because g5 is a serious threat. And then after g5, bishop went all the way to h2. Then uh, black played bishop to g6, get this bishop back. And white implemented this very common idea to push the pawn on the queen side. And here we have the situation where some of the pieces got traded. And as a result, black has this passed pawn which can be the weakness, which can be also the strength if black starts to push the pawn forward. So here we have the move a5. Uh, white played rook to a2 to prepare rook to a1 to hit this pawn here. And black is now attacking in the center to get white's attention towards the center. White anyway responded with the rook to a1 to hit a5 pawn, bishop to d8 to guard this pawn and h4 is the move which actually uh, opens the game on the king side. I think this is quite a strong move, uh, but I don't believe that's the brilliant move. It's just a move that you can actually just come up uh, on the board because basically you are not strong on the queen side. Black is actually strong on in the center and all you have to do is to attack on the king side. h6 is a quite nice move to hold the position together and now bishop to f1. Well, the engine bar here so, says that it is equal, uh, but when you play blitz games, um, here we can see that white is a little bit behind the time somehow. Uh, you feel that you are in a defensive mode when you have to play moves like bishop to f1 because basically there's not much of the choices here for white then black responds with bishop to c7 very nice square for the bishop and white is trying to get the knight on the other side of the board and here white actually plays very nice move e4 breaking in the center and sacrificing the pawn so black uh, here responds with uh, bishop to f7 uh, well, if you ask me why black did not capture this pawn here, I would actually respond with either bishop c4, this check, and then rook to e1 to take this pawn back, or there's also a possibility to go for this pawn right, uh, right away with bishop to g2, and when white gets this pawn back, then white will also just can towards the c6 pawn, so uh, black's pawn structure will be weakened. So... Kramnik here played bishop to f7 to hold position together and now he's threatening to take this pawn and to attack the rook on a2. White captured the pawn on d5 and here we have some of the traits and, and at this point I think white managed to get out from the difficulties and now white has also this very nice pin white is attacking this pawn and there is also some tension on e5 pawn so white is already quite comfortable uh, rook to b7 and after this capture we have a lot of trades and white went for rook to e2 to hit this pawn and basically to win this pawn uh, black did not really try to guard with rook to e8 because after white plays rook to e1 this pawn will be anyway gone so he decided to push the pawn on the queen side give up the pawn on e5 and now to pin this bishop white responded with rook to e1 and here we have the trades and we got into the rook end game where according to the engine black is actually better because of this past pawn which is so advanced it is on the white side of the board so white has to now uh, come back very quickly with the rook to stop this pawn on a2 square 
basically you always want to have this rook not in front of the pawn but behind the pawn to have more squares now this rook cannot actually move away and black's plan is quite easy black wants to get this rook here on the queen side and to win their rook so here white came up with the idea to kick the pawns on the king side and just to give up the rook for this pawn and push those pawns on the queen side as far as possible and somehow here turned out that this is a great idea and white is winning because of the advanced pawns but you have to be quite precise here you can't push the pawns anymore but you have to bring the king uh, in the center and what she's doing now this is quite nice idea to shoulder your opponent's king not to allow this king to get closer to the rook to defense this rook uh, instead of going for example on the other side or for instance here this is basically one of the common ideas in the end games that for sure um lela was aware of so she's attacking the rook now pushing the pawn forward those pawns are basically unstoppable now Kromny gives check and tries his last chance here uh sort of trap you know if you make a mistake you'll be checkmated and this is the position which we started this video with so basically here white could just promote this pawn to knight and then wherever the king goes promote this pawn to the queen and there's no checkmate because white's king escapes here because white's king escapes here and this is completely winning but here at this point if you don't play online chess that much and you have this auto promotion to queen you don't know how to deal with this position here after some time Leila has here 20 seconds on the clock and she doesn't know how to how to promote the knight she just panicked and played king to d8 which loses the game on this spot and that's the end of a game okay guys you have seen it all and you heard also my thoughts about the game and you have seen the game itself what is your opinion about the whole situation do let me know in the comment section and please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more chess content and i will see you very soon in the next one bye like and subscribe to my channel for more such content.